Fighter Chief, second only. Let me fix your trunks here. No, no, leave him up there for right now. I'm gonna give you the mark. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Come closer. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Legal punches here on up. These are a bit high. Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. Donaire seems to have that eye of the tiger back. He seems to be in that same place he was a couple years ago in terms of preparedness, and that Donaire used to obliterate good fighters. The voice Is you just heard, that of HBO boxing analyst Max Kellerman, Roy Great. Jones also joins Great. us at ringside. And now as round one gets underway, Roy, you track what's going on while Max and I discuss what a loaded division this is. Certainly is. Um, Donaire versus Walters. Here is Lomachenko. See Lomachenko, of course, waiting in the wings, could get the winner of this fight. Johnny Gonzalez, Gradovich, Morris. The division's chock full of top-notch fighters. So supremacy in this division will really mean something for whichever fighter is able to carve it out over the course of the next couple of years. And Roy Jones, a relatively cautious start for two guys who may be looking to counter. Yes, yeah, a very good uh, slow start for both guys. But the thing you got to like about Donaire is the experience in speaking. You see he's starting out with head movement to try to set Nicholas up and get a little closer to land his power shots. Whereas Nicholas is just walking right to Donaire to get his power in. So it's like their backgrounds are coming out. Well, as I, as I was saying, Donaire uh, used to obliterate good fighters, but there's a sense about Walters that maybe he's something a little more than just a good fighter, and that even if Donaire is on the top of his game, he has his work cut out for him. Yeah, Walters is a very good puncher, a very powerful puncher, and a guy who does not know how to lose and who is not here to lose. He has done a lot of learning on the job. He got a lot better in that fight he had against um, Vic Darchinian. Watch your feet, guys. Watch your feet. Yeah, we mentioned he overpowered Darchinian in Macau earlier this year. That's the same Darchinian who was giving Nonito Donaire the devil of the time in Texas the preceding year before Donaire bailed himself out with a left hook knockout in the late rounds at the point at which he did so in the ninth round. He was trailing on two scorecards to Darchinian. And now Donaire goes down on what appeared as though it could have been a right-hand punch for Walters, but Raul Caiz rules it a slip, and there's no knockdown. Punch was on the chin, so I think it could have been ruled a knockdown, but he did slip as well, so. Yeah, just make the point very clearly here. It was not ruled a knockdown. Had it been a knockdown, it would have been second time, or the first time that Donaire had been down in his career. That was a right hand, but Walters told us he thinks he has a hook that can hurt Donaire. And Donaire, of course, every time he's hit anyone cleanly with his left hook, has knocked them down or out and usually broken something in that other guy. Um, the old expression in boxing is never hook with a hooker. It'll be interesting to see what happens if Walters tries it. Donaire is being very disciplined here about not leading, waiting to counter, forcing Walters to take the lead. But meanwhile, Walters has been landing some shots and is seemingly winning the round while Donaire waits for that countering opportunity. And that was the first big left hook of the fight that Donaire has landed, the first time Walters tasted his power. So now they both tasted one another's power, and the Ten fight seconds. will Stop pursue at, middle, at this seconds. point. Good long jab from Walters in this round just now. <laughs> both fighters trained by Don't their no fathers place. with everything that that brings in terms of implications. And we'll see how those relationships progress as the fight goes on. So move side to side. Don't stand that rope, okay? Bust it in back. Okay, keep moving side to side. That's all you need. Okay? Don't get hit with those jabs. Don't get touched with those jabs. Okay? Just move quick. Move your head quick. Then do some counter punching. Okay? Work. Your body shot's working good, but you didn't land it good. Okay? Very good call by the referee. You see this left hook to the shoulders, followed by a right hook to the shoulder. Did not make contact with Nonito's head. Therefore, it was not a knockdown, clearly a slip. Great call by the referee. So Raul, Raul Caiz Jr. on top of that one. Copy box numbers in the first round. The pace was relatively slow. Donaire landed four out of 24. Walters landed eight hold out on, of 26. On, hold on, hold on. By CompuBox count, Max. maybe the most effective punch. Max Kellerman pointed it out. That long jab by Walters toward the end of the round 
right into the mouth of Nonito Donaire. Oh, and though Walters punch didn't land on the face when Donaire went down, it doesn't have to to be called a knockdown, but I agree the referee's discretion was correct there. It's not what caused the knockdown. Well, I think the punch has to be landed in a scoring area for it to be called a knockdown, Max, and the shoulder is not a scoring area. Round two of a schedule 12. Nicholas Walters in the black and green trunks. Nonito Donaire in the red. In his Fighter of the Year campaign, 2012, two of Donito Donaire's four wins took place here in this in this ring, in this stadium. He was the main event headline fighter those nights. See Walters trying to get Donaire back with that hook when Donaire lands his. Well, Good left see, hook to the body by Donaire. Yeah, you see the experience of Donaire. Walters is trying to land his hook to the head only, but Donaire is also taking the body shot. And in terms of one punch knockout power in boxing, Donaire's hook to the head is as good as any. Donaire getting in a right hand to the chin of Walters. And in this round, Donaire has chosen after having waited in the first round to be just a little bit more aggressive, stepping up at times and taking the lead. The fire combinations at Nicholas Walters. Almost takes me back to the Zuma Nelson Salvador Sanchez fight. And you we're so guy... glad it does. What a <laughs> couple of names those are. Yes, it is. You see a guy, Nicholas Walters, who's young, but up and coming, trying his best to come out and compete with the more experienced, highly veteran guy in uh, Nonito Donaire. So in this case, Walters is Sanchez and Donaire. Uh, no, nope, no, nope. other way around. Yeah, Walters is a Zuma Nelson because the Zuma Nelson was only about 15 no, at that time, I think. Got yeah. it. And I Sanchez see. took that fight on short notice and wound up stopping a Zuma Nelson in the 15th round of a classic fight. But what a fight it was, and this so far has lived up to be one good fight because these two guys are playing for keeps. Oh, Hard body oh, shot by Donaire. Walter says it was below the belt. Raul Caiz immediately agrees. As does bien, Donaire. Tiempo, and Walters will get a chance to recover. Here we go. Touch gloves, guys. Head accidental. Head accidental. Head accidental. Here we go. Está bien. Okay. Here we go. Donaire Box. offering the touch gloves, indicating he understood it was low, and now Walters is ready to fight again. They're even on punches landed in this round, five apiece. Good hard left hook by Walters. Yeah, he's not here to play games, Jim. He's trying to win. I think the Nair's cut Ten now. seconds, stop at the bell. Hard right, right hand by Walters. Body shots by Walters. Got in a right cross. Jab lands for Walters. Left hook for Walters and left hooks for the Nair. Second left hook hurt Walters. Never hook with a hooker. <laughs> Walters giving Donair too many chances at the left hook, and he almost paid the ultimate price at the end of the round. Well, not the ultimate, but the boxing ultimate. Gotta put that foot in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that's it. Breathe, breathe, breathe right now. Are you feeling good? Do you feel good? Yeah. Yeah, you crazy? He hits hard, but that's it, right? He's still not, I mean, a low blow. Definitely a low blow. Right down the middle. Both fighters admitted it. Uh, Donaire didn't do it on purpose. He showed right away that he knew it was low and uh, gave the guy a hand pound to show that, hey, my bad. Raul Caiz Jr., the referee, okay. came hold to on, us to tell Let's us go, that the cut was caused by Box. a punch, not by a butt. Fascinating round to score because Walters was taking the lead throughout the round, threw more, landed more, seemed to be getting the better of it, and then in the closing seconds got hurt by a Donaire left hook. Donaire won that round. I mean, you know, you do that to a guy, you have him drunk, walking around the ring drunk. You won the round, I don't care what happened before. Right, and, and he got him drunk at about the 256 mark, but it's good enough. Good enough. And now Donaire's on the hunt. He knows he can hurt Walters, and he's after him. Good left hook again by Nonito Donaire. Donaire Coming up and under with that one. Showed a lot in that last round. Not only that, he still has that fighter's mentality that when his opponent seems to be getting the better of him, he wants to go right back, but also that he's still Packs power, even at featherweight, even against a big, young, strong kid. Walters was having his way. May have gotten just a little too enthusiastic 
and he hung that chin out there for Donaire. Well, no, he didn't really hang it out. He just didn't realize the punching power, the true punching power of Donaire. Stop, no, no punch, no he punch. thought he could exchange hooks with him. Exactly. You don't know that sometimes until you're in front of a guy. I never forget when I fought Jeff Lacey, he thought for sure he could hook as hard as I could, but it was no way possible. And he didn't know that until the fight started. Same thing has happened here with Nicholas. The hook is not like a jab. Sometimes you want to throw a jab to nullify the other guy's jab. It's not a knockout punch. If the other guy lands the jab, you're still in the fight. But you lose the battle of the hook. Oh, fight's that was over. Legal. That was right. Two quick no. left, left hooks inside by Walters. Now Donaire lands the left hook. Oh, Maybe good right hand. hand. Walters yeah. reaching with that right hand, but getting it onto the face of Donaire. And you see Donaire steadily stalking. Everything Donaire is throwing right now has knockout on it. Knockout intent except that jab. And Walters knows that. So Walters is returning punches with knockout intent, but he doesn't quite have the experience to deliver the right hand with that kind of intent yet. Walters sticks his jab. Lands it despite the Donaire head movement. Walters has had success whenever he's thrown that jab. There it is, long distance. Keeps Donaire at range and snaps his head back. Yeah, he has a good left jab. If he had a good right hand to match it, he'd have a, a Donaire would have a real problem in front of him right now. See, that right hand is kind of a slapping right. It's not as straight as that left hand. Left. Oh, 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 that was a good right hand. good enough to knock Donaire down. That was not a slap that yes. time. That was not a slap, no way. He brought it up and under a little bit and got it onto the chin of Donaire, and that is the first knockdown of Nodito Donaire's career. Very smart in the right of a cut. So now both fighters have had a big moment. Walters just a little bit better because he got Donaire to the canvas. That jab setting everything up for Walters. Good left hook by Donaire. Walters lands the right hand again. And they're both going for broke. What a firefight we're getting now. I told you. I told you, watch the Africa, okay? Just move, don't get too close too much, John. Get to the rings, you're too close too much. Rings, the move. Okay, how you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? Don't get too close, eh? Karol, I know he's gonna come in, okay? Okay? But I. Max, you asked me earlier why I like that to keep the hands down. You see Donaire's hands were up right there, but the uppercut came right down the middle. He couldn't see it because his own left hand blocked his vision. Once again, you see him going, the right hand came from behind the left hand that's up. So the left hand blocks the vision and the uppercut sneaks right up the middle. So while he sometimes struggles to throw the right cross with power, the, the uppercut was full power all the way. Harold, how have you scored it through three? Look at Jim, I got it two rounds to one. 29, 27, Nicholas Walters. You know, Jim, I thought he had boxed him in round one, but then uh, Nonita Donaire came along and he won round two with some good left hooks. In round three, that uppercut gave uh, Nicholas Walters a 10-8 round. So two rounds to one, 29, 27, Nicholas Walters. And this fight, Jim, so far is pretty clear. When Walters fights behind that good long jab, things go his way. When he thinks he has Donaire in trouble and starts to hook with him, he gives Donaire chances. Well, Donaire has to do something now to change the tempo of this fight because Walters is at an all-time high confidentially. And with his confidence being so high, Donaire needs to do something as the older fighter to slow the young fighter down. Such as? Well, you got to hit him with something big and hurt him again or do something to make him feel as though he's the lesser fighter in the fight. Walters told us yesterday he didn't feel that he had to take anything away from Donaire. Rigando, who beat Donaire, uh, did it by taking, partly by taking his left hook away. And Walters doesn't feel he has to do that, but he paid the price for that earlier in the fight. Yeah, he did, but he also came back and proved why. He showed that he's just as strong a puncher as Donaire. Just as Donaire can hurt him, he can hurt Donaire. And by the way, Roy, it's abundantly clear to this point who wins a jabbing contest. Must Donaire at some point make a decision about whether to go in closer and try to fight on the inside? Well, he has to make a decision to stop trying to knock Nicholas out with one punch. And whether it's inside or outside, he has to become more busy. Great point. In like the that. last round, Walters threw 15 more punches than Donaire. It's just a big enough margin that it catches the eyes of judges by and large. 
Well, Walters is definitely more confident because he sees blood on Donnell now, and he knows that Donnell is strictly trying to knock him out right now. So Donnell has to go back to his boxing game. Against smaller fighters earlier in Donnell's career when he was at the height of his physical ability, he could get away with improvising his boxing and not doing it by the book. Here against a more textbook fighter who has physical advantages, Donaire is suffering from this. Well, the eye is not looking good, Max, and Walters is definitely making it worse with that long jab. Yeah, Donaire is going to have to make quick decisions in the next few rounds. Yes, he His is. His right eye is cut and not getting any better. He's losing the dab dabbing, dabbing contest to a longer fighter, and he's been knocked down for the first time in his career. And he to, needs some drama. And to Nicholas's credit, Nicholas is also doing a good job of working Donnell's body. I don't see Donnell throwing a lot of body shots at Nicholas, Ten but seconds. Nicholas is Stop hitting him gentlemen. with some Ten great seconds. left body shots. Listen for that bell. A bloodied Nonito Donaire goes back to his corner for several fighters. Jabs in round four. This illustrates a part of the problem for Nonito. Donaire was two of 22 in the jab category, according to CompuBox in the fourth round. That's two out of 22. Walters, 14 out of 34. So again, there's no question who wins the jabbing contest. Donaire has to find another way. There's also no question who's winning this fight. It's Walters winning the fight, except for that left hook at the end of the second round for Donaire. That said, Donaire's been in trouble before, and his power, especially the left hands, bailed him out, and we've seen him have Walters, I think, ready to go from that left hook at the end of the second. Well, right now he's not being a smart guy because he can't let Walters continue to attack him like this. If you let Walters continue to attack, he's bound to land a punch sooner or later. So Donaire needs to do something, like I said earlier, to change the rhythm of this fight. And the way to stop Walters from dominating the way he's doing it? Is, is to stop him from coming forward. Shoulder up with him, shoot a jab at him, do something to make him go backwards. If not, that's going to continue to happen. Can't just let a man come at you free with it. And that means free willingly without having to worry about a punch. So what, what Donaire needs to do at some point is stand his ground. What are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? But he, he isn't throwing body shots, though, Jim. That's, Bob, that's puzzling to me because the younger fighter is looking like the more seasoned or more veteran fighter. The younger fighter is throwing body shots and head shots. The veteran is the one forgetting the head shot, forgetting the body shots. Donaire speared Walters with a right hand in there. That's what got the crowd's attention. Spears him again with a right hand. Walters' left hook not as effective at close range like that. Quick left hook inside lands for Donaire. But Donaire now Walters careful. lands another in return. And exchanging hooks. But Donaire has to be careful in here because he's the guy with the bad eye. And he's the guy who seemed worse affected by those left hooks just then. And he's still not throwing any body shots. There's that Walters uppercut again. So Nonito Donaire so far is giving Nicholas Walters a vacation to the body. And that's a severe deficit, cumulatively, as we keep going from round to round. Most definitely, because the kid, uh, Walters, is still going to Nonito's body every chance he gets. Good body shot there by Nonito. But you see Nicholas come right back with it. Inside, Donaire at least has chances. When Walters keeps him at the end of that jab, there's not a lot Nonito seems to be able to do. That's my point, Max. That's why I said you got to either get close to him or start punching more. We can't keep backing up like this, though. Walters got most of his professional training in the gyms of Panama City in Panama. And I said to him, does everybody there want to be Roberto Duran? He said, everybody is Roberto Duran. Oh. They all fight with the same energy. He actually gets more, more, more uh, experience in these fights, Ten Jim. Seconds. He got so Not much experience in the fight against Victor Artillion until it's unreal. Donaire's got to come up with a big hook here because Walters is beating him up on the ropes. Walters, he's putting more and more distance between himself and Nonito Donaire. Whereas he was slapping with that right hand, Walters was earlier in the fight, he started th throwing some good straight right hands against Donaire when Donaire's back was on the ropes. Yes, he did. When he had a pin against ropes, he threw really good right hands. Well, he changed the fight with one right uppercut when he deposited Donaire onto his trunks, and that seemed to give him more confidence in the right hands he's continuing to throw upstairs. Now that he knows he can hurt Donaire, he's concentrating more on throwing power with his right hands instead of just throwing over the top with kind of an open hand. Now Donaire's other eye seemed to be cut. 
The left eye has a cut on the outside. There's that jab, and good things start to happen when he unfurls the jab, Walters does from distance. Told you about the 73 inch wingspan. Because of the nature of his body, his belief in his punching power, you're invited to think of Walters as kind of a featherweight Lennox Lewis. Comes from the same part of Jamaica that produced the great heavyweight champion, who of course fought under the banner of England, but was always a native Jamaican. Donaire admitted to us yesterday that in the Darchinian fight, in between rounds after Darchinian hurt him, he was thinking about quitting, but his body wouldn't let him. And at a certain point in this fight, if he can't change the fight, you wonder if he's going to confront that moment us. again. Donaire, of course, didn't quit, went out, went out and came from behind and knocked Archinian out. And insisted to us yesterday that all the desire is back. That he wants to continue to be a great fighter and a meaningful force in the sport. That he wants to have a career that will go down in history. That he expects to go from here to 130 pounds and then 135. But all of that thinking could change if this continues to go the way it's going tonight. Well, it's a tough night for him. The young guy's Stop. gaining confidence every round. And when you got a young guy like Nicholas coming up at you, chasing you, trying to knock you off the top, it's pretty rough for a guy like Donaire when it gets hard early. Particularly for a guy who suffers from the talent of the gift that his Donaire does, where he was so fast, he did hit so hard, that he didn't have to learn technically how to do things, maybe as well as a less gifted athlete would have to. And so now doesn't have as much of that to fall back on. No, he is more, he is a better technician than Nicholas. It's just that in pro boxing, sometimes the guy who strikes first or makes the other guy mess up first or mess the other guy face up first is the guy that gets the advantage. He just caught Donaire first. He made Another hard right hand by Walters. Donaire gets in a left hook. Walters with two more right hands, and Donaire is down again. And I don't know if he'll get up this time, Jim. I don't think he will. I know he won't get up this time, Jim. Seven. He won't get up this time. He's up, but Raul Caiz is going to stop it. Nicholas Walters has seized Donaire's portion of the featherweight title. And that could be the end of the top flight run of one of the significant fighters of the last several years in the lighter weight classes, Nonito Donaire, and the birth of a featherweight star in Nicholas Walters. And let me just give credit to some people you never see. Before every fight, Roy and Max and I are treated to a preview written by the staff of CompuBox based on their perceptions numerically of what the two fighters have been doing. The CompuBox prediction for this fight was this torch will not be passed. It will be violently seized. And there's a brand new force in the featherweight division in that loaded lineup of fighters we told you earlier. This man must be reckoned with. And the X man threw a real X over the top, uh, overhead right, right high on the head of Nonito Donaire. After the body shot, you see that body work right there, Jim? Those are the things that breaks older fighters down. But Donaire is constantly throwing at his head. He had just hit Donaire with a good body shot. Those body shots will affect you in the long run. And then it was all finished by that big overhand right, right on the temple. Right on the temple. You wonder what kind of punch in a boxing ring might concuss you? That was concussive. Yes, it was. That's for later. So Nicholas Walters, with axe in hand, celebrates his victory. Thank you very much. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here at StubHub Center, Carson, California, the end of this contest comes at two minutes, 59 seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory. His record now goes to 25 and 0, 21 KOs, and he is the super world champion of the WBA. The KO King from Jamaica, Nicholas X-Man Walters! All right, here's a
look at final confidence.